Hello everyone. As I promised, I will discuss the uh, exam today. I know I already spoke about the exam, but I'm going to be a little more detailed today, so hopefully you can help you study. As you know, I'm going to be out the 16th, so this gives you plenty of time to uh, go through all the uh, questions. So first I want to tell you the exam, as I mentioned, is four sections. Um, the first section deals with bond analysis, 25 points. The second section deals with the uh, DCF, which is equity valuation. And that's probably the toughest section. I'll walk through it in a little more detail today. The third section deals with derivatives and options, what we learned last lecture. And we're going to finish uh, with the last section with the financial analysis and ratio analysis. So let's dive into uh, some of the spreadsheets that you are ready to uh, study. So if you um, focus here, um, I put this for you to uh, look at it. The first uh, question, it will be the first section, will be basically the spreadsheet. This is based on the uh, based on the March 21st spreadsheet. And um, and if you can tell, there are two questions. If you go to the actual first question, it's basically I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you this de detail information, the settlement date, maturity date, coupon rate, a coupon payment, and you can actually calculate that. I don't have to give you that one anyway. Um, I will give you the call provision, final payment, and the price. And from here, uh, you have here, you have to calculate yield to maturity, which as you know, it's, a, it's an Excel um, formula, which is equal yield and all these items up here. Then I will give you a yield to call uh, data here, so you can tell actually which ones, uh, which one yield to call and yield to maturity. And then from there, you're going to pick up the lower yield to get the yield to worse. So that'll be a first question. And this could be a 10 point question and we discuss this in detail. But this is just straightforward, more like an Excel based uh, formulas. Okay. The second question gets a little more uh, challenged, uh, challenging. If you look at the second question, it's going to be bonds again. I'm going to give you a face value, a coupon rate, and a yield, or interest rate, I call it. And then from here, uh, I'm going to do it for, um, I guess, annual. Uh, as you know, the spreadsheet has semi annual, but this is going to be an annual, a little more easier to understand. And you have to calculate the price, you got to calculate the duration, and you're going to calculate the convexity. Uh, and the price is very simple. Uh, since it's an annual, it's 8% a thousand, so $80 every year. And then the last payment is 1080 which is the principal plus the interest. And then you're going to do a present value of the 80 using the 10%. And you do that every year, so it's temp a present value of 80 on the first power, present value on the second power, third power, fourth power. And then I will add all that, and that represents the price. So on an interest rate 8% or coupon rate with a 10% yield, since the interest rate is higher than the coupon rate, uh, therefore the price will be lower than $1,000. It's yielding higher at um, a discount. Okay. Then from here, you're going to get a duration. That's very simple. You two take weights. So $72 divided by 877, that's 8%. 8.29%. The second one is 66.116 divided by 877. That would be 7.5%. And you do that for every year, including the last year, which is the biggest payment of 47%. Those are the weights, how the payments are made to get you to the 877. And then the duration is a Macaulay duration, which is based on, uh, based on actually years. So you multiply the weight times the year, so 1 times 8.29 is 0 0.0829, the digital, and you do it for every year. When you add all this, that will give you the duration. So this 10-year bond has 7-year duration. The next level, which is actually independently, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be that the, actually the convexity here, and we can zoom in a little bit at convexity. Convexity is independent. You don't need to have the duration to calculate the convexity. And you can tell here the convexity is t plus t in the second power. So basically t is over here. 1. 1 plus 1 squared is 2. 2 plus 2 squared is 6. And then you do that. 
After you do that, here you take that amount times the present value of the cash flow of 72. So you get this big amount. You add all this and you get to a number 59. Like it's just some weird number. It doesn't really mean anything. It's 59,585. Uh, so you take that, that's your numerator, and you divide it by the price, 877, but the price has to be adjusted, as you can tell, has to be adjusted altogether, the present value of 877. So this is your formula, actually, to follow what that is. But if you go to the spreadsheet, you will see the, uh, the actual calculation. So in this case, it's a, it's a duration of 56 points, which means that every interest rate, every time the interest rate moves 1%, the bond actually will get affected 56 points okay so that will be my second question of the first uh, of the first section um, then we're going to go actually and discuss the second question which is a little more involved and i'm going to walk you through it actually in more detail now this is the spreadsheet from the um, from the february 18th um, it's a february 18th lecture uh, sorry, February uh, 28th, sorry, lecture, is the CAPM, uh, the WAC, and the DCF is called the spreadsheet. So if you open the spreadsheet, you're going to get this very complicated spreadsheet, but we're, gonna, we're not going to do this entire spreadsheet, but the most of it. So the first thing, I guess, that the this, this spreadsheet will give you some data as input. It'll probably give you the sources and users. You don't really need the users side, so it's going to focus on the sources side. In this case, we had $50 million of bank debt, $30 million of mezzanine, and $40 million of equity. And basically here, you're gonna calculate the percentage of each to the total. Then you're gonna, I'm gonna give you an expected return. Now, the difference between this spreadsheet and what I'm gonna give you in the exam, I'm gonna give you a fixed. Remember that 5.36 comes from the IRR of the LIBOR plus a spread. I won't do that to you. I will just give it a more simpler. So look at it as if it's fixed. I will, let's say I give you 6% or something. 6% on the bank debt. And then maybe a 9% in this case, mezzanine note. And then the equity. The equity has to be calculated based on the CAPM. We discussed that, I guess. On the CAPM, as you can tell, I'm gonna give you three numbers. I will give you like a treasury note, which represents the risk-free. I will give you a beta. Uh, which represents the, um, the volatility against the market. And I'm going to give you either an equity premium or a market risk, market uh, return. If it's a market return, you got to calculate the premium. Market return, as you know, is the, uh, is the return minus the treasury note, so you get to a premium. In this case, we have the premium. So in this case, I will add the 195. You see, this is, a day, this is the formula, though that's plus. That should be plus. So the risk-free plus the beta times the premium. So 1.6 times 11.05, it gives you around 18.05. 18.05 plus 195, it gives you 20%. So go to the formula here, and it will tell you how the Excel works. You bring the 20 million, 20% here, so you have expected return for each of the capital. Bank debt at uh, 3.4. Mezzanine note is at 5.7, and then you have the equity of 20. Then you continue to calculate the WAC. Basically, the WAC is after tax, so you have to the tax effective rate. So the three point, so the 5.36, and the tax rate in this case is 36%. You would do one minus 36%, so that's 0 0.64 times 5364 to get to the 3433. You do the same thing with the 9%, 9% times 1 minus 0.36, you give 5.76, but you don't do that for the equity. The equity is not tax deductible, so the equity you're going to transfer over to 20%. So once you have that, that represents the cost after tax cost for each of the capital that you're going to raise. To calculate the WAC, you're going to multiply that rate times the capital, percentage capital, and you get all these numbers. You add all these numbers and you get a weighted average cost of capital of 9.84%. So from there, the second part of the uh, 
equation. I'm going to give you a little mini uh, debt schedule. So you're going to have a bank loan here, a bank loan, corporate bond. Now, anything blue here is given. So I'm going to give you the principal payment. And then you have to calculate the outstanding and then the interest calculation. Obviously, go to your spreadsheet, you see all the formulas. As you can tell, the outstanding goes down by the principal. So 50 in this case, minus 3 is 47. 47 minus 5 is 42. And you do that for every year. The interest is basically the actual interest rate, which in this case, I'm going to give you a fixed rate. So let's say it will be 5.34 times last year's outstanding. So this number is times the interest rate times that year. And you do that for every year. So now you have an interest and a principal. If you add the two, you get a total financing or the debt service. 5.15, 7.2, and you go all this whole thing. You do the same for the corporate bonds. Corporate bonds are a little easier. I won't give you any payment, repayment, because bonds obviously are balloon payments at the end. And then you have the interest fixed at 9%. So 2.7 million to the 30 represents 9%. The other thing you have to do, you have to add the two payments to tell you what's my total obligation. So that's seven, nine, etc. And the third part of the uh, equation is to build this little mini TCF. Now this TCF don't get, um, uh, you know, don't get a little more confused because it looks like a lot of numbers, but it's the, it uses the same premise. I will give you. Uh, a starting revenue. Now, I may have the revenue year year zero, so don't get confused. I don't have to give you year one. I may have a year zero. If I have a year zero, you're gonna have a 5% growth. I'm gonna give you a growth, and you grow the revenue by 5%. Then I may have some uh, cost of revenue. Now, don't look at historical cost of revenue. Everything is based on projection. So I may give you, okay, project 35% cost of revenue as percentage of revenue. So this number will be 35% of that, 35% of that, and that's how it works. I also gonna give an open expense as a percent of revenue, 15%, so that's 15% of that, 15% of that. And then this minus this two, you get to an EBITDA in this case. EBITDA is the first year, is projecting $20 million. Then I will give you depreciation, again, percentage of revenue. So 3% of revenue gives you depreciation. Amortization fees, I won't give you, this could be zero, but if I did give you the amortization fees, uh, that will be seven year amortization. So amortization uh, fees in the user side of 3.6, but if I don't give you a user's probably you won't have the transaction unless I mention to you. So, but if I give it to you, you divide that by seven consistent, so you get your fees. So EBITDA minus depreciation minus fees, you get to an EBIT. And then for DCF purposes, you don't subtract an interest. Interest is zero, it's unlevered. You get to an EBT. Then your taxes, basically taxes is percentage of that. And then you have depreciation, amortization, adding that back, it's a positive number. And then you have a working capital, which in this case is 1% of revenue. So 1% of 40 is 400,000. And then 3% will be a CapEx of 40 will be 1.2. You subtract all the expenses and add all the positive stuff like depreciation and you get to this cash flow financing. And then you drop, you come and you put in the financing obligation, which if you remember, this comes from up here that you added. So subtracting that, you get your equity cash flow. So you're almost there. The only thing you have to calculate the terminal value. Terminal value is a little tricky. The first part will be an EBITDA multiple so in this case, six times multiple that I will, you have to calculate, and I'll tell you a few minutes, times the EBITDA that year. So EBITDA grew to 25 million from 20. So five, X six times 25, 525, it gives you 153. That's the enterprise value for the exit year. Now the six times represents, if I don't give it to you, the multiple of the purchase price. So I guess uh, 123, I guess, divided by 20. Tell you one or six times, but I will either give you six times or I give you the, ex the, the, the multiple that the company is buying, okay? And 